Welcome to another video where medical topics are made easy. Today I'm going to show you a simple trick to remember the main cyanotic congenital heart defects. This commonly shows up on medical and board exams, so it's worth learning this quick trick. You can find the notes and study guide for this video linked down below. All of the videos come with notes that you can use, so make sure to hit that subscribe button that way you don't miss out. So let's get right into it. Congenital heart defects are structural abnormalities of the heart or great vessels occurring during fetal development. You may also hear of them referred to as congenital heart diseases or CHD. CHD can be subdivided into two types, cyanotic and acyanotic. Cyanotic defects are heart defects in which the blood pump to the rest of the body contains less than normal amounts of oxygen. In other words, the heart is pumping mixed blood containing both oxygen-poor and oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. This can lead to cyanosis, which is a bluish discoloration of the skin. Cyanotic heart defects contain right-to-left shunts, meaning deoxygenated blood from the right heart mixes with oxygenated blood in the left heart. This causes oxygen-poor blood to get delivered to the rest of the body. Acyanotic defects are heart defects that can affect the normal flow of blood, but blood oxygen levels delivered to the body typically remain normal. Acyanotic heart defects often contain left-to-right shunts in which oxygenated blood from the left heart mixes with deoxygenated blood in the right heart. So with acyanotic defects, the blood delivered to the rest of the body still remains oxygen-rich, which is why there is no cyanosis. In this video, we're going to focus on cyanotic congenital heart defects and go over a simple memory trick to remember them. Here is a list of the main cyanotic congenital heart defects. In other words, they're the heart defects that can cause cyanosis. The first trick is you can see they all start with the letter T. So when you see a congenital heart defect on an exam that starts with the T, there's a good chance it's a cyanotic heart defect. Now the cyanotic defects shown can be tough to remember, so let's go over a trick to help you with this. The trick is to count them off on your fingers. Let's go through the defects one by one so you can see how it works. The timestamps for each defect are linked below. The first cyanotic heart defect is truncus arteriosus. You can hold up one finger to remember this. Truncus arteriosus is when one blood vessel leaves the heart instead of two. You might remember from the anatomy of the heart video that normally there are two main arteries leaving the heart. The pulmonary artery leaves the right side of the heart and delivers deoxygenated blood to the lungs, and the aorta leaves the left side of the heart and delivers oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. However, in truncus arteriosus, the great vessel coming out of the heart fails to divide during development, leaving a connection between the aorta and pulmonary artery. As a result, there is a ventricular septal defect, or a hole between the right and left ventricles, and one great vessel leaves the right and left ventricle. As a result, both oxygen-rich and poor blood is delivered to the body, and this can lead to potential cyanosis. So again, you can use the number one to remember truncus arteriosus and one great vessel leaving the heart. If you need more information on the normal anatomy and blood flow through the heart, you can check out the previous videos in the cardiology playlist. It'll be linked down below as well. The second cyanotic heart defect is transposition of great arteries. This time you're going to hold up two fingers, and you can even cross your fingers to represent the transposition. Transposition of great arteries is when the two main arteries leaving the heart are transposed or reversed. Remember we said the main pulmonary artery normally leaves the right heart and goes to the lungs, and the aorta leaves the left heart and goes to the rest of the body. In transposition of great arteries, the pulmonary artery and aorta are reversed, so the main pulmonary artery arises from the left ventricle instead of the right, and the aorta arises from the right ventricle instead of the left. This creates two separate circuits where deoxygenated blood in blue flows from the right side of the heart to the rest of the body instead of the lungs, and oxygenated blood in red flows from the left side of the heart to the lungs instead of the rest of the body. So there needs to be a connection between the two circuits to allow for oxygen-rich and poor blood to mix. So there's typically a patent ductus arteriosus or a ventricular septal defect present. As you can imagine, this will lead to deoxygenated blood being delivered to the body and subsequent cyanosis. So again, you can use the number two and cross your fingers to remember transposition of great arteries and how the two great vessels are reversed or transposed. The third cyanotic heart defect is tricuspid atresia. For this, you'll hold up three fingers. Tricuspid atresia is a congenital heart defect in which the tricuspid valve fails to form. Remember in our medical terminology video, the prefix tri means three. 
So holding up three fingers will help you remember tricuspid atresia. Remember from the anatomy of the heart video that there is a valve between the right atrium and right ventricle called the tricuspid valve. In tricuspid atresia, the tricuspid valve fails to form and blood from the right atrium cannot enter the right ventricle. Instead, there is an atrial septal defect or a hole which allows blood to pass from the right atrium to the left atrium. So now the oxygen poor blood from the right heart mixes with the oxygen rich blood in the left heart, leading to decreased oxygen levels in the blood going to the rest of the body, and this can lead to cyanosis. There are different types of tricuspid atresia, but the right ventricle is typically underdeveloped and a ventricular septal defect allows blood from the left ventricle to enter the right ventricle and pulmonary artery. So again, you can use three fingers to remember tricuspid atresia and how the tricuspid valve fails to form. The fourth cyanotic defect is tetralogy of Fallot. For this, you'll hold up four fingers. Tetralogy of Fallot is a tetrad of four heart defects. Remember in our medical terminology video, the prefix tetra means four. So holding up four fingers will help you remember tetralogy of Fallot and that it's a tetrad. The tetrad includes pulmonary stenosis, which is narrowing of the pulmonary valve and main pulmonary artery, right ventricular hypertrophy, which is thickening of the ventricle wall, overriding aorta, which refers to the enlarged aortic valve that seems to open from both ventricles and sits on top of the ventricular septal defect, which brings us to the ventricular septal defect, which is a hole in the wall between the right and left ventricle. The pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, and ventricular septal defect can alter pressure gradients and allow oxygen poor blood to travel from the right ventricle to the left side of the heart, and this can lead to cyanosis. So again, you can use four fingers to remember tetralogy of Fallot and how there is a tetrad of four cardiac defects. The fifth cyanotic heart defect is total anomalous pulmonary venous return. You can hold up five fingers to remember this because there are five words that make up the defect. This is when the pulmonary veins connect to the systemic venous system rather than the left atrium. Normally, the four pulmonary veins deliver oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. In TAPVR, the pulmonary veins do not connect to the left atrium. Instead, they connect to the systemic venous system. As a result, the oxygenated blood from the lungs mixes with the deoxygenated venous blood from the body, and the mixed blood flows back to the right atrium. Since the pulmonary veins are not delivering blood to the left atrium, there is usually an atrial septal defect present to allow blood to travel from the right atrium to the left atrium. Remember the right atrial blood in this case is mixed, oxygen-rich, and oxygen-poor blood. So the left side of the heart is receiving less than normal oxygenated blood and delivering it to the rest of the body. And this can cause cyanosis. So these are the five main cyanotic congenital heart defects. They all start with the letter T, and you can count them off on your fingers. Hit pause in the video and try to name all five and what their main defect is using the counting method. Use one finger to remember truncus arteriosus, which is one great vessel leaving the heart instead of two. Use two fingers and cross them to remember transposition of great arteries, which is when the pulmonary artery and aorta are transposed or reversed. Use three fingers to remember tricuspid atresia, which is when the tricuspid valve fails to form. Use four fingers to remember tetralogy of flow, which is a tetrad of cardiac defects. Use five fingers to remember total anomalous pulmonary venous return, which is when the pulmonary veins connect to the systemic venous system rather than the left atrium. Hopefully this gave you an easy way to remember the main cyanotic congenital heart defects. If you found the trick useful, please hit that like button and leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe to not only catch future videos, but also all the videos come with notes and study guides that you don't want to miss out on. The notes and study guide for this video are linked below. Thanks for watching and hope you check out future videos.